Hello, today is April 22nd, Friday, 2016, and you're watching Audio Tree Live, and we're here with Robbie Folks. Here were tailhawks at watchful at the faded edge of day. The phone poles and the pines rose from the scoured clay. The sun was slipping toward the gulf in its own good time. And you would not think of death if you drove on past the signs. The old men at the roadhouse weren't too polite to stay. Where we'd come from wasn't home, and we were far from even there. The cab around my neck drew suspicious eyes to me, but we were not there to talk. We were only there to see. said nothing it was then I stepped outside and in the instant I knew I would not forget the sight Alabama at night Alabama at night You took the wheel up one night Scan the road ahead Trying to let all I could see Cover up all I had read That hotel would not likely Let a working man lie down Like a curtain through its walls Ran the sorrow and the sound And I knelt down To let it in me Sure it would come If I gave it and I fumbled amongst a hundred words, but words don't do it right. Alabama at night, Alabama at night. Through sunlit rooms, the wealthy walk and the pale unshaven men to stand before each frame. Five seconds, maybe ten. And to unveil all the maker wanted to portray. But I'm not there to talk, and if I were, I wouldn't say. Across of rough cut branches in the wide gray shadowed sky, a child not from birth with the end edged in her eyes the morning star above her and a hymn upon the breeze but poor is no sacred song poor is a disease and no hand reaches down from heaven and no one denies it so patiently we wait here as all the world it rolls. Alabama at night, Alabama at night, Alabama at night. Mm -hmm. Got another tune here. Called the Buck Starts Here, Key of E. I'll play this one in tune just to be different. <laughs> I never knew this place. Had so much empty space until night When you walked right out the door
And so I walked to our bedside and I pulled out that 45 that laid for years behind our chest of drawers. First it looked too worn to play The label all but washed away And I paid out the name of my old friend Thirty years and a scratch or two Crying time again. The box starts here with Hank sure to follow. Turn him up loud and clear. He's singing my song. Oh, yeah. Come on in, Pete Finney. Thank you guys so much for coming in. And, uh, it's a pleasure. It. Awesome. I, I just saw recently on your Facebook that you posted uh, you at a White Sox game. Look like a photo. Are you are you a huge White Sox fan or is it? No, I hate sports. Actually, <laughs> it's funny, but they uh, <laughs> they started having me to sing the anthem a uh, couple of years ago, okay. and it's a great gig. You know, it really makes you realize. I'm just reaching for my capo while I'm talking to you. It's not that. <laughs> I like you that much, but uh, <laughs> it's a great gig because you look around the uh, stadium, you know, on a Tuesday night and it's like 
freaking 40,000 people. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking, man, I'm in the wrong business. Look at all these people, you know, 40,000 yeah. on a Tuesday night. That is pretty amazing. I'm lucky to play for 18 on yeah. a Friday, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, because I live right in that area. That's why I was asking. Do you ever, like, hang out before or after? Like, do you, like, because I know, like, just the singing part of it as far as, like, just doing an anthem you said you did. Do they ever do any accommodations? You get to hang out and meet with the players, or like, what's it like as as far as? Well, like, I, I don't know any of the players. Uh, yeah. You know, not being a fan, but I always bring my kids, and they always give you like a, a box, <clears> and <throat> okay. a uh, and you get all the Jack Daniels that you want, and uh, <laughs> and the plus. food is really really good. <laughs> so it's not like a typical ballpark experience. I really uh, enjoy it, and uh, it makes me kind of like baseball to tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah. So sports in general are just not you just sticking to the music. I don't know. I kind of have the John Waters position on sports, you know. It's, it's something that ruins family holidays and uh, causes, like, needless grief within, uh, you know, yeah. friendships. And I'm not into it. Yeah, the stress and the anger over the games and the rivalry, the betting. Like, I, 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 can, yeah. see, I can see where you can get that, for yeah. sure. Yeah, well, if you guys want to I'm the only that. country singer that hates sports, probably. Oh, are you? Yeah. you can, I don't know. Oh, I guess there's, you got one more over here. A few. Oh, a few. A everybody. <laughs> Everyone in here. Hello. Yeah. No wonder we're not getting anywhere. This All is right. a good sport. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is a good sport here. You guys yeah. are doing well. It's a uh, workout. You guys can roll the next one. All right, right, we got one called Long I Ride, Little I Gain. Well, it's ryegrass in the winter time, flowers in the spring, but Texas in the summer is nigh on suffering. I went up on Jackson Hill at a diner, I sat down, and I waved at every stranger just to move the air around. It's a long to ride for the little I gain. Brooklyn girl, I never thought it through. She had silk brocade in her bedroom and a job that paid for two. I think I'll get down the old guitar and see what I may find. Get a dollar off some lawyer on a number seven line. It's a long ride for the little I gain. Ah. Oh, this is live? Oh, shit. Oh, my God. You're doing well. You're doing great. All right.
Uh, so far, so good, at least. That's right. I know, we were hoping we could fix some stuff, but no, it uh, sounds pretty good, right? Yeah, it sounds great in here. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, I don't know how it sounds in there, but in here it's great. So <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Um, I, I heard, I saw online, I, you never know what you could read online, you know, you never know if it's true or not, but I read that uh, you used to teach uh, instruments, like did you used to teach when you first moved to Chicago? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Did yeah, you, I spent a long time at uh, Old Town School of Folk Music from okay. like 1980. Four till uh, about ninety six, teaching guitar and stuff, and yeah. I read, I read that you you taught Tina Fey. I did, yeah. How how did that come about? Like, she, was it just like a random? She walked in, needed. She walked in, yeah. It was a Saturday morning class, and uh, of course, this is before she was Tina Fey. You know, she mm -hmm. was like, uh, she didn't really really look like she looks now, but she yeah. came in and uh, <laughs> and. Uh, I don't know it's there's i don't know where i'm going with that story because it's not even a story yeah she came in for lessons yeah. you know she had to do like a, a sketch at second city where she was okay. working that involved i think playing a ukulele which is tuned the same as a uh guitar you know the top mm -hmm. four strings and uh so uh yeah yeah and then she kind of stuck with the class a little while and we got to be uh friendly and then she moved to new york and uh She's really busy lately, but I still yeah, I really occasionally I see, see her. I'm going to see her next month uh, nice. for a little bit. So Cool. Yeah, because I figured, I know a lot of your music's like that dark humor, like that. I didn't know if you like any of her work, too. Is that like a trade-off that you Oh, like? I hate her work. Yeah, yeah it's terrible. <laughs> no, I, I mean, uh, I like her work, and, uh, and, and oddly, I mean, maybe not oddly, but I have a lot of comedian friends, you know, and maybe it is because I, I have funny songs. I don't, yeah. I don't know why, but I'm a big comedy uh nerds so yeah. i'm i'm really happy to hang around comedians that's cool has that always been a thing for you or is that like like is when you're younger me? has it always been a thing like into comedy like when you were younger were you really into it like saturday oh, night live yeah. that type of thing or is it something you've more grown yeah up? i remember yeah even before saturday night live uh, mm -hmm. started uh i loved the mad magazine and oh, uh yeah. the national lampoon and uh yeah it was worrisome for my parents to tell you the truth that uh <laughs> you know especially the lampoon uh, it was pretty hardcore, but uh, but loved it. Yeah, SNL, SCTV, Monty Python. Oh yeah, I can, anything. Yeah, I definitely get the Monty Python kind of dark humor vibe sometimes when I'm listening to some of your stuff, which is a very good thing. It's it's pretty funny. And yeah, good well, thank way. you. It is flattering. Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah, you guys can roll into the next one. Are you ready? All right, we're gonna do you one. Am I allowed to mention a record that is out now? That yeah, yeah, we could do that. So uh, my new record is called uh, Upland Stories, and I hate to bring it down onto a base commercial plane, but we're kind of pushing okay. that record yeah, yeah. called Upland Stories on Bloodshot Records, and it's got some. Uh, it's got a few uh, bleak songs about modern American life on it, and this is one of them. This is called uh, South Bend. <laughs> Soldiers On. It's uh, sung from the point of view of a, a grieving father centered here in the Midwest. You see them as the trees turn on Colfax Avenue. These lonely girls, they come out in the fall. With hearts they drag behind them like long black bridal trains At my age, I feel a father to them all I see more than I need to from my front porch swing these days pale to old remember joys Sometimes when I'm not thinking I fall on my knees and sing Where is my boy? Where is my blue-eyed boy? This Midwest that I love proved a little more to him than a place you watch grow smaller from a train. If he came back a grown man, his eyes would surely swim to see this place where so much is the same. One God assures our freedom, two armies keep control. The U.S. for the young ones, salvation for the weak and old. Keep your burden from your neighbor and leave a good name when you're gone. People last but a lifetime and South Bend soldiers on. Now the widow 
Flowers of last season flirt in the summer shade Their grapes are torn like bad fruit from the vine The touches of lost lovers, they burn and then they fade But dreaming never lets go of your mind And me, I look each night at a photo by the bed each morning and another sunrise And if all that we are made of Is these ghosts inside our head Who could blame us for pretending otherwise One God assures our freedom Two armies keep control The U.S. for the young ones Salvation for the weak and old Keep your burden from your neighbor Leave a good name when you're gone People last but a lifetime South Bend soldiers on Watching Audio Tree Live with Robbie Folks. So I got another question for you. I know you've been doing this for quite some time now. You just had the new record out. I was wondering, um, like, how do you think things have changed as far as your tours? Like, as far as maybe even releasing records now from back when you were doing it in the '90s until now? Is I know obviously, like, the music industry has changed quite a bit. In your experience, has it been a positive thing? Uh, kind of just going for the ride thing, or? Well, it's a little funny because uh, people ask me that sometimes, and I know, I, you know, I follow. I follow events industry-wide a little mm -hmm. bit, not a lot, but I know that, like on paper, a lot of monumental things have happened over the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. But uh, oddly enough, my income has stayed about the same, <laughs> and my uh, tour schedule has remained about the same, mm -hmm. and the the uh, the groove has been pretty steady. So I've been with like an indie label and mm -hmm. a major label, and I put out my own stuff. And there are some years where I don't put out anything, but I still. Mm -hmm you know, travel throughout the year. So most of my money comes now as before from uh, live gigs. Live gigs. Okay. And, you know, a slice of it, you know, comes from uh, record royalties. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, as as people buy fewer and s fewer CDs, you know, LPs have arisen to kind of take yeah. up some of the slack, mm -hmm. downloads and streaming a little bit of the slack. Yeah. But... Uh, it, it ask me again in 10 years because it may be different, but <laughs> yeah. as far as my own experience, I'm not really registering these sweeping changes. Okay, well, in that note, like like the last record you just did, you work with Steve Albini, correct? Right. Uh, what, what's the process like with him as far as, because I know a lot of the things he does is quite variety of different types of music. As far as when you go, is it just like you go on, you plug in, you play? Or is it like, a, is there a lot of like production on his end? Or what's that like working with him in the studio? Uh, I would say what you said except for the plug-in part is uh, <laughs> is what it's like. So it's just like this, as a matter of fact. The room yeah. doesn't look so dissimilar from this. And um, I've um, I I've been working with Steve since 1986, so mm -hmm. that's, what, 30 years. So at this point, we know each other, and you know I know mm -hmm. what the deal's going to be. And I even kind of have an idea what it's going to sound like going in. So... Um, so and he knows you know what a jerk I am so it works out you know back and forth <laughs> so it's a it's a good uh, it's a good relationship where mm. we know what to expect of the other and we have uh, you know we can uh, you know I think if uh, I think I, I might be intimidated uh, intimidated by him if I were say 25 now and he yeah. were his present age and I went in to work with him because he's mm. a really smart fellow and he's opinionated and he's mm. uh, you know and he doesn't suffer fools and all that kind of thing but yeah. We're both, you know, crusty old guys, and we get along fine. <laughs> That's great. And is that does that have any effect as far as when you're writing? Do you think of that process? Like, oh, this is the album's going to be more acoustic based. Is this going to be more? Do you like think about the recording when you're writing, or is it more just like the songs are coming natural? Or about like who's going to engineer it? Yeah. Do, does that have any effect, or even like just like the idea of the overall album? Like, hey, we don't want this to be more acoustic based, or do you think like as you're writing, it kind of just comes out how it does? Well. um... 
I write regardless of that. And yeah. then when uh, when I'm getting ready to make a record, I try to like uh, I don't know what the auditory equivalent visualize, but I try to visualize the sound of it. Okay, I see. What you're and um, and anticipate that. And if it's something that's kind of lush and grandiose and involves a lot of I don't know. Uh, overdubs and automation and effects and this and that, then Steve wouldn't be the go-to probably. But yeah. there's been a couple instances, actually now that I think of it, where I did want that and I went mm -hmm. elsewhere and was disappointed and ultimately came back to Steve and kind of <laughs> did that at his place. So mm -hmm. uh, he's done about maybe half my stuff over the years and uh, like I say, the relationship's comfortable. But but he definitely has a, he definitely has a, uh, a working approach mm -hmm. and uh, even kind of a sound, you know, that comes out of his place. Yeah, and if you, and that. if you don't want that, then you don't go there. But. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, it sounds great. So yeah, you guys can roll into that last one whenever you're ready. Alrighty. This was about my aunt. She played the banjo. And uh, when I was a kid, I went to visit her and uh, played the banjo for her. And she didn't care for the way I played the banjo. And this is about uh, that day and about her uh, new husband that uh, appeared that day, who's a fiddler. And it's called Aunt Peg's New Old Man. We came up the hill to meet him in the dirt patch he was weeding. That was our first look at Aunt Peg's new old man. Our Uncle Hank was 75. He lived well and then he died and none of us had nothing against her new old man. She liked his fiddling, no doubt, liked his help on the rural route and the rest didn't bear thinking about Aunt Peg's new old man. We sat down and we got fed along grace, but what a spread. The chicken was just one hour dead and the stew was made of barley. Here's called going down to Raleigh. Now old Aunt Peg begun to frail when they got going on the Texas scales, hit my ears like an awful whale. Robbie Folks, thank you guys so much for coming in. I yeah, really thanks appreciate for having it. us. Yeah, no problem. Um, tomorrow you guys are playing the Old Town School of Folk, right? Is that that's yeah. happening? Okay. Yeah. And then Can you I introduce the players. Yeah, yeah. Go right ahead and go around. Yeah. For it's sure. uh, Pete Finney on the steel guitar, Alex Hall on the drum set, Shad Cobb on the fiddle, and uh, I guess that's everybody. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Sounds Todd good. Phillips on the string bass. Oh, yeah. Awesome, perfect. Well, this session will be out in a few weeks. I wanted to thank the, everyone here at Audio Tree, the camera, lighting, studio. Um, so if you want to support them and the band, just download the session a few weeks when it's out. And uh, thanks a bunch for tuning in. See you next time.